Welcome to another episode of Cookware Therapy. Okay, raise your hand if you own a Teflon pan. It's okay, I won't tell if you won't tell. But am I the only one? Really? Today, I'd like to take a look at the fear of Teflon and to bust some Teflon myths that I keep hearing about on this channel and in my classes. So first, let's define a few terms that you'll hear when people talk about Teflon cookware. PTFE is the non-stick material. The best known brand name of this material is Teflon, made by DuPont Corporation. PFOA is the chemical used in the production of Teflon, and PFOS is the chemical related to PFOA that is no longer used in production of Teflon and it is now outlawed in Europe. To research this subject, I used the info from the Environmental Working Group, American Cancer Society, Harvard School of Public Health, and many other sources. They are linked in the description below this video. Myth 1. Teflon can flake and get into your food, increasing your risk of cancer. I don't recommend that you serve a bowl of Teflon flakes with milk for breakfast, but there is absolutely no evidence that consuming trivial amounts of Teflon are harmful to human health as long as that Teflon is below 500 Fahrenheit at the time of consumption. Uh, PTFE is an inert substance. It does not react with other chemicals. It simply goes through your system and comes out the other end. Myth 2. When Teflon pans are heated, they release PFOA fumes. These fumes cause cancer and birth defects. Large amounts of PFOA are indeed very harmful to human health. American Cancer Society warns that working with these chemicals or consuming them in contaminated water can increase your risk of several cancers. It also increases the risk of birth defects and can get passed to babies through mother's breast milk. DuPont Corporation knew about these dangers for years and kept them quiet. Due to their negligence, many of their employees and people who lived near their plants have gotten very sick. All of this is true and awful, but your Teflon pans are not made out of PFOA. While PFOA is used in making Teflon, it is not present or is present in extremely small amounts in Teflon-coated products. This is not a quote from the pen manufacturers. This is a quote from American Cancer Society. They say that there are no known risks to humans from using Teflon-coated cookware. That's the part that the manufacturers of green nonstick pens don't mention, although they love to quote American Cancer Society to tell you about the dangers of PFOA. If you are indeed worried about PFOA, Teflon pants should probably not be on top of your list of concerns. Most Americans are exposed to more PFOA through stain-repellent clothing, upholstery, carpeting, microwavable popcorn bags, and pizza boxes. You could make a valid counter-argument here that all those other products are not heated, with the exception of popcorn bags, and Teflon pans are. Yes, it's true that if Teflon is heated to a high enough temperature, residual PFOA, of which there is very little, could be released into the air. So the question is, how high is too high? Environmental Working Group gives 554 Fahrenheit as the temperature at which ultrafine particles start to be released. Manufacturers say not to heat Teflon pans past 500 Fahrenheit. And according to this Australian government's organization, with a very long name, fumes are only released from Teflon-coated cookware when it is heated to extremely high temperatures of 640 Fahrenheit and up. So what do these temperatures mean for cooking? You are about to find out. For this test, I'll be using my new toy from Thermoworks. It's an infrared gun that can tell me the temperature of any surface. Yes, I did put a Teflon pan under the broiler, well, only for one minute. But keep in mind that there are three variables that control the temperature of your pan. Your heat setting, how long the pan spends on this heat setting, 
what is in the pan. In other words, a broiler with a full pan for one minute might heat your pan less than medium heat for 10 minutes. So the highest we got was about 438 Fahrenheit and those were some very well browned burgers. What were the carrots doing in that pan? Protecting the empty spots from overheating. I went through a whole batch of batter and the highest my pan got was 469. But I never leave an empty pan over a flame except for the initial preheating. Aha! Uh -huh. I did get over 500 Fahrenheit on this one. For a short time and in one spot, but I did. Turned out my pan wasn't centered over the flame and that made one side extra hot. But this happens to me all the time, so I'm glad that it happened in a video. I also didn't use any oil in this dish, relying on the fish to render its own. The benefit of skipping the oil is reducing the splatter. A potential downside is that the pan can get a bit hotter without an even layer of oil in it to absorb the heat. This hypothesis needs more investigation, so don't quote me on this one yet. Just to put the slight overheating in perspective, we didn't get anywhere near the danger zone of 640 Fahrenheit and up. So it's an unknown risk. You know what's a known risk? Grilling. Yeah, it causes cancer. So, you are welcome to throw away your Teflon pans along with your grill, but I would personally gladly trade a little bit of my life expectancy for a perfectly grilled steak or my glazed salmon that requires a Teflon pan. Myth 3. You should never heat an empty Teflon pan. Oh, come on, you shouldn't overheat a Teflon pan, but if you want the food to brown, preheating the pan is necessary. If you're worried about overheating it, get an infrared thermometer or simply put some oil in the pan while preheating. It's very easy to tell when the pan came to temperature because the oil will start to ripple. But I do agree that once the pan is at the correct temperature, you should fill it completely. Myth 4. You should never use metal utensils. I think people just love rules. How about some common sense? If it's not something you would do to your skin, don't do it to the pan, like cutting with a knife. But if it doesn't hurt you, it will probably not hurt your pan. If you get a good pair of metal tongs, I use Edland brand that provide amazing grip. And pick up your food like this instead of like this, no harm will come to your Teflon pans. Even a metal spatula is okay, as long as you're gentle. When there is a lot of scraping, like making scrambled eggs, I do use a silicon spatula. Myth 5. PFOA-free nonstick pans are a safe alternative to Teflon. Green nonstick pans do sound very attractive, especially when the manufacturers tell you that they're just ceramic. But keep in mind that it's not Teflon that's bad for you, it's the chemical used in its production. 50 years ago, nobody wrote about the chemical used in the production of Teflon, so we were happily oblivious to it. You know, right now, nobody writes about the chemicals used in the production of green nonstick pans, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. There is a term for this phenomenon. It's called regrettable substitution. I didn't make it up. Check the link to a Harvard School of Public Health below that describes it. When the media makes a stink over some chemical like BPA in plastics, we throw away our plastic bottles and replace them with BPA-free plastic. 
Well, turns out that it's made with another chemical whose risks are simply not yet known. I have looked very seriously into switching to green nonstick pens. Well, turns out that scan pen that performs well does use Teflon. It's just PFOA free Teflon. And truly Teflon free pens start to stick with repeated use according to Cook's Illustrated reviews and Amazon reviews. There is also a cost issue. You see, unlike stainless and cast iron pens, all nonstick pens wear out in a few years. One 12 inch scan pen costs around $150, and my three Teflon pens cost me $25. At that price, I can afford to replace them frequently and buy an infrared thermometer for $50 to make sure I don't overheat them. Myth 6 Cast iron can replace Teflon in any task. Cast iron is relatively nonstick after a lot of seasoning, but not quite compared to Teflon. But its main flaw is that it is so heavy, so if you're trying to make Spanish tortilla or something else that requires flipping in a cast iron pan, well, good luck. <laughs> Myth 7. Teflon pans can kill birds when overheated, so they must be bad for humans too. Respiratory systems of small birds are very sensitive and can be harmed not only by overheated Teflon, but by aerosols too, like hairspray. Birds can also be harmed by caffeine, alcohol, and chocolate. Just a reminder, humans aren't birds. So where does this leave us? Should you use Teflon pants or not? You know, I don't think there's one right answer. It depends on what you cook, how well you can pay attention to your pen, and how much you choose to worry about little risks in your life. And before you tell me it's a big risk, let me just tell you something. I get into a car every day. Nothing I do in the kitchen comes even close to the risk of driving. Counter arguments are more than welcome in the comments, but if evidence-based discussion ain't your thing, keep in mind that there is a whole internet out there. No need to hang around this stupid channel, so this is a perfect opportunity to unsubscribe and thumbs down this video. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your support is what makes it possible for me to do the kind of video that requires a lot of time and research, like this one did.